reproductive medicine and assisted conception. And today I'm going to be talking about a slightly challenging and, a, and quite an interesting paper, which uh, takes a long time to review and understand and uh, gives us some ideas about how the ovary is working and where this is being used is to a large extent this is being used, we can use it. In fact, in cases where we see a defective FSH and LH action. I'm not talking about low FSH and LH as in hypo, hypo, but rather I'm talking about um, uh, a decreased FSH and LH actions in medically assisted reproduction. So if you go back to the uh, initial part, you, know, you look at the two cell, two gonadotrophin theory um, and uh, the creation of estrogen by aromatase, which acts on granular cells. And then the granular cells under the effect of FSH stimulate follicles and also influence LH leading to follicular development and maturation. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to um, use this mainly, use the paper itself and try and do the talk from the paper because it's difficult to do this talk on a PowerPoint presentation. So there are two important aspects here, and one of them is a reduced FSH LH, and the deficiency of FSH LH, which traditionally has had a less amount of attention being given. Now the action of FSH LH is determined, and the, if you look at them, they are the isoforms of LH and FSH, polymorphism of FSH and LH, and agents such as the pill agonist protocol all influence gonadotrophin action. So in this review, what have the authors tried to do? And they have tried to look at the determinants of uh, reduced FSH and LH actions with reduced quantitative and qualitative response to ovarian stimulation. So let's go back to the very basics. And uh, if you look at, as the FSH increases, there's an increase in estrogen which then inhibits, and if you have a look at this entire pathway, it starts inhibiting the FSH by negative feedback. And then it increases a rapid GnRH pulses, in the late follicular phase. This negative feedback is also supported by Nibin B. In the late follicular phase, there are increased GnRH pulsatility, and this also increases LH which stimulates, gets stimulated by increased estrogen. So if you now see what happens after ovulation is there is increased progesterone and that has a negative feedback on the hypothalamus. So what that then progesterone does is it reduces GnRH pulses. And as the corpus luteum dies and goes towards a demise, then you're looking at GnRH pulses start increasing and FSH starts increasing. So it's a beautiful way in which the GnRH, uh, uh, you know, the hypothalamus and the pituitary start working and how the GnRH signals keep changing uh, as they keep decreasing. And that's on the effect of progesterone and they keep increasing. That's on the effect of uh, estrogen and FSH. The AMH also has a new role here. And the, the, we have found AMH receptors in the hypothalamus in GnRH neurons. And AMH acts on the GnRH neurons to increase LH secretion. The AMH also inhibits follicular growth by decreasing the sensitivity of ovarian follicles to FSH. So that's again one of the reasons, as I said earlier, that AMH is like a, uh, it, it holds back follicles. And that's, we know, it has an inhibitory response so that you only lose a certain number of, of follicles. Now, if you look at the synergistic action of LH and FSH in follicles, so what you need is in, in a combination of FSH and LH, and it activates progesterone and estrogen and granular cells and luteal cells. We know that FSH receptors are expressed in granulosa cells, and we also find LH receptors in the theca cells of early antral follicles, the granular cells of pre-ovulatory follicles, and the luteal cells. So what I think this, this review is going towards, it's going towards looking at uh, whether uh, LH 
is something which we are missing. So in the mid-late follicular phase, both LH receptors and FSH receptors are expressed on granulosa cells. So whilst the FSH is sufficient for follicular growth, even with low LH, as LH increases, the combination of FSH and LH promotes LH-mediated pathways. And what are the LH-mediated pathways? They're ovulation and luteinization. So those are the two essential pathways which are LH-mediated. So let's now come back to the question which this paper is trying to answer. And it's LH and FSH deficiency in medical-assisted reproduction induced by GNRH analog protocols. So you have GNRH agonists and antagonists, and both cause transient LH and FSH deficiency. The GNRH agonist initially increases FSH and LH, and that's the flare pr protocol, and then is downregulated, occurs at the GNRH receptor site. In the antagonist, it blocks the GNRH responses, and also pituitary response seems to be preserved. So when you use recombinant FSH, the LH is present there is sufficient to stimulate the ovaries. But here is the key. If the LH is lower than the baseline, and that's what they're trying to say, then outcomes may be affected. So if you have a look at what a few papers have said, and what happens when there's profound LH suppression? And Westergaard looked at this and he looked at the agonist protocol with recombinant FSH. And 48% of women, the LH, when it went below 0 0.5 international units on day eight, they saw a decline in pregnancy rates. Another study saw a 50% reduction in LH when there was an increased suppression of LH in mid-follicular phase on the agonist protocol. So what is the hypothesis here? That as your LH goes down in ovarian stimulation, there's a decrease in conversion of androgens, which are precursors to estrogen, and you have a lower E2 in stimulation. There have also been some other studies who have not found this correlation. Now, the LH threshold is very much different, and the LH threshold needs to be between 0 0.5 and 1.5, and that is uh, what we see in hypohypos. They have looked at the GNRH antagonist protocols, and they have looked at if the, the change in LH is less, decreases by 2 to 2.1, below the baseline, there is a very low chance of a live birth rate. So again, Cole and his paper looked at if the suppression of LH of 26%, they would produce low LH, and this could be reversed by recombinant LH being added. So the question now comes up is, are we ignoring HMG? And, and this paper is not about HMG, but are we completely ignoring by not giving HMG, are, are we in some cases causing a negative effect on stimulation? Also, the severity of LH suppression and is linked to magnitude of suppression. It's not just one level, but how low it goes down. And that's where this figure came up. The several studies have shown that when you combine recombinant FSH and recombinant LH, it showed an improvement. There have been two systematic reviews which have been done so far and have found no effect. So if you, if you look at women with an advanced maternal age and mainly in, uh, after the age of 39 and 40, and you look at the reduced LH and FSH actions, with advanced maternal age, you see an impaired funct functioning of LH and FSH. In the meta analysis of using recombinant FSH in LH in 35 to 40 year old, they found a better you know, uh, clinical pregnancy rates. And there were three RCTs which were done and that recombinant LH compensates for this oversuppression of LH after 35 years. 
And then this combination may improve results. And again, I'll come back to it by saying, does HMG make that change? Now, what is the hypothesis? The hypothesis is that there's an effect of LH on oocyte maturation. It exerts an anti-apoptotic effect on cumulosa cells, promotes signaling, starts the process of cell expansion and oocyte maturation. The LH modulates signaling, and that has an impact on the endometry. So if you then look at the hyper-response that occurs to ovarian stimulation due to reduced FSH and LH action, so you're giving a good amount of FSH and LH, and there is a reduced action that occurs. So you see that. You see that sometimes that you start stimulating, and you just don't see that response even in some women with a, a, a good reserve. And it may be because there could be receptor deficiencies and there are some studies which say that in normal ovulatory women, it may be between 10 and 15%. So an unexpected slow response or a stagnated response, that's what you see sometimes, and the standard dose does, does not help or sometimes needs an increased dose. And then there was a few papers which looked at using the combination of recombinant FSH LH, and I would say again, query HMG to improve results. Now, we want you to use two factors, and I think it's very important that you'll be able to use it and see whether that can help you to understand. It's, it doesn't change your outcome, but using these two, two um, ways of assessing a response may help you to understand why and how your response is poor. One is fourth, is, is the follicle output rate. It's a number of pre-ovulatory follicles divided by number of small follicles at the baseline in 200. And so what are you looking at? You're looking at follicles that let's say 16 to 18, but what follicles did you start with? You started with 22 and then you had only eight follicles coming. And that is a poor fold. You also look at follicle oocyte index, which is number of oocytes collected and number of baseline. Why is that important? Is at the end you want oocytes. And if your oocyte numbers are significantly lower from the baseline, so you get 20 follicles and you get four oocytes, that's a poor you know, follicle oocyte index. And it's a better response of hyperresponse. So you can also see in a reduced LH and FSH action in ovarian stimulation due to genetic variants. And there are many, you're looking at SNPs, polymorphism, FSH LH, uh, receptor SNPs, LH variations, less active LH in the alleles, a position, 312 change, and these are very much in research and, and that those are very much complex things. Now, at present, you have to remember that this is one of the most challenging aspects of uh, uh, assisted conception, where you, are, you see uh, that there is LH and FSH deficiency. Again, I'm not talking of hyperhypoxia, I'm talking of LH and FSH deficiency in some women who are normal ovulatory. There is probably a reduced FSH and LH production or action in the presence of normal or low LH and FSH and E2. There could be an FSH LH deficiency which may be underlying. And again, the question would get asked is, would you benefit by using HMG or a combination of recombinant FSH and LH? Recently, there's been Poseidon, which has been a patient-oriented strategies which encompass, encompassing individualized oocyte number. And they looked at a huge database for looking at Poseidon 1, where there's a good reserve uh, and young patient, and Poseidon 3, which is, again, a low reserve, but in a young patient. And response is always lower in women as they get older. Again, in this cases, you'll find yeah, that you'll be doing better if you combine uh, FORT and uh, FOI. So what does this conclude? And the reason I brought this paper up again is very to quote their own words, that a reduced gonadotropin production or action may cause clinical significant LH and FSH deficiency associated with reduced gametogenesis and steroidogenesis. This may explain, to a certain extent, it may explain why some women have an unexpected hyper response to a standard ovarian hyperstimulation 
especially with recombinant FSH alone. And in fact, it may affect ovarian response in women who are older. And what you'll have to decide is there will be more studies which will probably start telling us which women or rather uh, why certain women will have a better response when you combine recombinant FSH and recombinant LH, which means that LH has that huge amount of importance in that small section, well, let's say about 10% of women who are normal ovulatory, normal reserves, but who have a, a reduced action of FSH. And then my question would always come up is where I tend to use, I tend to use a significant amount of HMG and maybe that is the answer. So it's a slightly different way that I've tried to present it because of the challenges that come up with this paper. Very interesting paper. And I'll say it's worth reading this paper and that will be quite helpful.